got something I'd like you to do. All right? I'm going to give you this, which is a story. Okay? Now, this is a story that was written by my niece, Macy, who is seven. All right? It is rubbish. <laughs> You're going to read that out loud, okay, a few times. And what's important as you do this is that you need, in your mind, to have a, a picture of something while you read it out loud. That's a little bit complicated to think of something while you read out the story. But I want you now, as I talk to you, just to allow some image. And while you read the poem, uh, read the story, to allow an image to form in your mind in front of you like that, sort of from the back of your mind to move forward. But I don't want it to be influenced by anything that's in the story itself, uh, nor by the pictures on the outside. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. So, can you all come around here for me? I'm going to put some uh, aprons on you and give you some paint. Okay, you're all sat very nicely. Thank you for that. So listen very carefully so you all understand what we're going to do. Amy's going to read a story. You have to listen really carefully to the story while we do this. While she does that, you're all going to make a handprint picture on this big sheet of paper. And while you do it, no talking's allowed because you've ought to really listen to the story that Amy's talking to you about. All right? Off you go. Would you like to read for us, Amy? Near the biggest tree that ever grew by the fence down by the duck pond lived a duck called Dan. He decided he hated yellow. I really hate my beak. It's unbearable. Boo-hoo, he'd sob. Everyone in the forest glade actually made Dan a red beak to wear, and he was happier. The end. Near the biggest tree that ever grew by the fence down by the duck pond lived a duck called Dan. He decided he hated yellow. I really hate my beak. It's unbearable. Boo-hoo, he'd sob. Everyone in the forest glade actually made Dan a red beak to wear, and he was happier. The end. Near the biggest tree that ever grew by the fence down by the duck pond. OK, stop, guys. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Amy. Thank you for reading that horrific story so many times. Thank you all, and very well done. You were brilliant. Um, just a second, just stay there for me while I just talk to Amy. Shh. How are you doing? Enjoy the story? Um, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, let's just, just show it to me for a second. While you were reading that out, um, you were focusing on a, a, an image, you were thinking of something. That's in your right. Head. All right. Uh, and obviously, just for the record, you hadn't told me what that was going to be or anything like that. That was yeah. just something you did as you were doing it. Was it in any way influenced by any of the things on this page? No. Not at all. It no. was just something out of nowhere and just in your head? Yep. There is no possible way that I could know what that is right now, is there? I would have thought so, I know. Anything like that. <laughs> well done. Is yep. that what you were thinking of? Yep. Come with me. Let me show you this. This will take a little leap of faith on your part. Okay. All right? I realise that's just a massive brown paint. Just take a look at it as a whole. If you're a moment, we just ignore this corner here, which has all gone a bit wild and a bit mad. Just imagine oh, no, that no, 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 I over. can see. Can you see it? That's slightly freaky. Two legs, arm coming down there, you know that corner, yeah. another arm there, the body and the head, and there's even a face in there as well. It's a teddy bear. That's freaky. Well done, kids. You are brilliant. <laughs> <laughs>